Hi all, Terry here with another video. Because God is so awesome, all things are possible with God, right? Okay, so the other night while sleeping, I was dreaming of the Lord talking with me, teaching me some things on the breach in the bloodline of Judah and that it was brought back together again. These are things I have been studying lately. He gave me more insight because I had gotten stumped in my studies. Then it got to be about 2 a.m. and he told me I had to wake up. And he left me from being in the spirit, the spiritual encounter. I did not want to wake up in the natural. I was remembering the things the Lord and I had been discussing. But then... In a very clear, audible voice, I heard, Mom. Now, if one of my children walked in my room and said, Mom, like that, I would always wake up immediately. But this Mom was in my own voice. My eyes popped open long enough for me to turn from my side to my back, and I closed them again. I thought, that's dumb. Why would I wake up for my own voice saying, Mom? I tried to just remember what the Lord and I had been discussing, but I kept thinking back to if it was my own voice or if it was one of my children saying, Mom, I would wake up right away. But why did I need to wake up if it was my own voice saying, Mom. Then the quick thought entered my head. What if I was saying it to my mom who I live with? She is 81 years old. So I thought, I guess I better get up. The reason I had to wake up is because our furnace broke and we only have the fireplace for heat. The news forecasted the temperature to be a low of only 8 degrees above zero that night. So, to keep the house from getting too cold, I had to wake up every couple of hours to stoke up the fire. So, after I went back to sleep, after I had gotten up and got the fire going good again, I started dreaming, but it was a very lucid dream, like I was half awake. I was shown the passage in the Bible about Jesus feeding the multitude with only five loaves and two fishes. Now, if this kind of thing happens, where I am doing a Bible study in my sleep, I know it is something the Father wants me to put out on a video. So this is my task for this video. Using this very well-known miracle, I am going to show younger and maybe some older Christians how to read the scriptures seeing through scriptural or spiritual, I meant spiritual, eyes. and letting the Holy Spirit guide you as you read through all Scripture. So, starting at Matthew 14, verse 13, it is after the beheading story of John the Baptist where this picks up. We see that Jesus, when he hears of what happened, departed by ship to a desert place apart. And when the people had heard, they followed him on foot out of the cities. In verse 14, Jesus went forth, saw a great multitude, was moved with compassion toward them, and healed their sick. Then next, as it is getting late, the disciples come to Jesus, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. 
And victuals is um, in the Greek 1033, which is food, especially ceremonial articles allowed or not allowed by Jewish law, and then meat. And it comes from Greek 90, 977, to eat. And so then in verse 16, it says, But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. And then in 17, it says, The disciples say unto him, We have here but only five loaves and two fishes. Then verse 18, Jesus said, Bring them hither to me. Next he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake, and gave the loaves to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. Verse 20, And they did all eat, and were filled, and they gathered up twelve baskets full of the fragments that remained, the leftovers. Verse 21 tells us that the number that had eaten were about 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. So this is a story from Matthew. Spiritually, it must have major significance because this story is in all four Gospels, which not all stories are, if you ever take notice. Each account has minor variations, but all are pretty much the same. So the Catholics and the carnal, carnal Protestant Church think of this story as proof of one of the miracles that Jesus performs while here, while he is here on earth in the flesh. But they believe it is a story placed in the Gospels to boast or to boost faith meaning that if we have faith enough, we will never go without the things we need in life to sustain us. We have heard this preached, or I have heard this preached many times throughout my whole life, with just this message, that if we have faith, if our faith is enough, God will sustain us for all our needs. That it is our faith that allows God to provide for us. I personally don't agree with this teaching because that puts the condition of our faith as a factor of whether or not God provides for us. Jesus did not preach or teach conditional love, but rather unconditional love. You know, um, God provides for the birds of the field, right? And they don't they don't have faith, you know. They just go about their their day and he provides for them. So, anyway, what we should do with this story is try to let it feed us as Jesus did feed the multitude and all were filled. One does not get too full for long on milk if we just are seeing this story for the literal miracle of feeding the multitude with only five loaves of bread and two fishes. But this story does, as all scripture, have deeper layers to it. So if we try to read the story through spiritual eyes, then we are eating meat and getting filled. So let's go through the story again, only this time let's look at it using our spiritual vision. So first we pray. We thank the Father for and the Holy Spirit for giving us eyes to see and ears to hear in the spirit as well as the natural. We thank him for giving us discernment and revelation 
We're pointing out what is important for us to understand about these scriptures. And then we thank him for keeping the enemy out of the way of our understanding. And then we always do that in Jesus' name. We pray, Amen. And we always do this before embarking on any study of the scriptures. So in Matthew 14, verse 13, I'll just read it. When Jesus heard of it, and that is the death of John the Baptist, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people heard of thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. Okay, to see with spiritual eyes, we do what we can to help the study. We look up all the words back to, in this case, the Greek, because it's the New Testament, and we, how we look them up, we look up the, the numbers in the Greek, in the Strong's Concordance. Then after that, we try to see beyond the natural, meaning with the help of the original language, meanings, we try to try to see the meaning in a spiritual way. Like in this verse, Jesus departed by ship. So it's a vessel, making himself the vessel. Because when traced back, the word ship in Greek is number 4143, a vessel, a sailor, from Greek number 4126, to pass in a vessel, sail, properly a form of Greek 4150, through the idea of plunging through the water. So, 4150 equals to plunge, that is, launder clothing, wash. So, just Jesus departing by ship says to us that Jesus is the pure vessel passing through or by the water, which, in this, which water or over the water signals a presence of the Holy Spirit. This is how we dig deep into the word for the meat. To further the idea of this verse and story, telling us on a spiritual level that we are looking at the very nature and miracle of the Son of God being here on earth, we see that Jesus went by ship into a desert place apart. When we look up in the Greek, the actual meaning of the words desert place apart, we find that Jesus went to a solid or went solitary condition, as the word place can be seen as a condition, and apart can be extended to the whole as throughout. So Jesus, as the Son of God, is in a solitary condition throughout his time here on earth, as having the Holy Spirit dwelling within him. This makes Jesus unique, and the people can sense this so for the rest of the verse, we see he is followed by a crowd of people on foot, which is likened to what we are called to do as believers. Be willing to leave the cities. Here, cities is warring and fortified, meaning that we are to be willing to leave the places of carnality and our secular ways, and go to the wilderness to follow Jesus. So as homework, you can do the rest of these verses through verse 21, which is the end of this story. 
and see where the Holy Spirit takes you in your understanding. I do want to talk about the main enlightening facts about this story, though, that most preachers and teachers seem to glide right over and miss. In verse 19, Jesus had the masses sit on the grass. That's funny because they are in a desert, right? But this is important. Sit down is from Greek 347, to lean back, lay, make, sit down. And from Greek 2827, to slant or slope, that is incline or recline, literally or figuratively, bow down, be far spent, lay, turn to flight, wear away. From Also from Greek 303 equaling properly up, but by extension used distributively, severely, or locally at, etc. And a piece by each, every, every man, in, through, and in compounds as a prefix, it often means by implication, repetition, intensity, reversal, etc. So that's interesting. Um, you know, bow down, be far spent, turn to flight, wear away. Um, you know, think about those in a spiritual sense. So then we see the word grass is G or Greek 5528, a court or garden by implication of pa pasture herbage or vegetation, blade, grass, hay. So here we have to use our spiritual eyes and look beyond the natural. Grass is green and alive and fresh and sitting down, we are resting. Sit down in the grass is that Jesus had the multitude put their spiritual rest upon the spiritual life that only God can provide. The word sit down alluded to that in the Greek meaning. Whenever the scriptures give colors, numbers, certain actions, and certain objects, there is always a spiritual meaning or perceptions for using those things mentioned at that time. This is why one can never fully understand the depths of the Word of God because it just keeps getting deeper and deeper. Anyway, moving on. After Jesus had the multitude sit down on the grass, he took the five loaves. Five is the number meaning grace and God's favor towards humans. And the loaves would be the bread which here is a bread with leaven that is raised. So this bread, these five loaves, represent by the grace of God, Jesus was sent to bear the sin of all men, all of us. And in the verse, he took the two fishes, which the number two in the Bible is used as a number to depict union, Jesus is one with the Father in heaven, and to bear witness, there must be at least two witnesses for a matter to be considered true or fact. The fishes is another food that is caught up or raised up, only this one is meat. So again, depicting Jesus as our salvation and his word being the meat, the scripture, is the truth being the way to the Father, God in heaven, Jehovah. So, okay. So, anyway, that's the, those were um, some important facts that I didn't want you to miss out on um, when you go to do this, the rest of this, or 
go throughout this whole story yourselves. Um, I just wanted to point that, those parts out because uh, in my lucid dream state, uh, those facts were pointed out to me that one that uh, I was being led to point out in this video. So um, anyway, uh, I guess that's going to be it for now. Um, do your homework. Uh, make sure you allow the Holy Spirit to let you see through your spiritual eyes and hear through your spiritual ears and find out all the other little nuggets that are in this story and hopefully you can get even deeper than what I've shown here let your spiritual eyes do the reading of the Word of God and I guess that's going to be it for now in Yeshua HaMashiach's name I thank you for watching and I pray Jehovah's will over all of you and your families and to those of you in the US happy Thanksgiving if you celebrate it have a safe holiday and a happy one <laughs> and that's it for now love you all bye bye